Hi, everyone. Really nice to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about palm oil uh, based on a research project that me and my colleagues have been doing, uh, which is set in Thailand. Uh, but I'm going to start with something much more basic. Um, I'm going to start with an observation that many aspects of modern food systems involve uh, changes to the Perfect. environment, involve changes to health, as well as changes to the economy. And we have this triangle of health, environment, and economy. Uh, and you can think of uh, many changes to the food systems, like the livestock revolution in the Asia Pacific. You can think about the aquaculture revolution in the Asia Pacific. Now, what is common to all these is that there are big implications for health and nutrition. Uh, there are big implications for the environment. There are big implications for economic outcomes uh, in the region. Um, and the basic point I'm trying to make is that we cannot make sensible, um, fully thought through strategies and policies in these, uh, in these food systems problems unless we understand the trade-offs uh, that are posed to health versus environment versus economy. So anytime we make one of these a decision to intervene in these sectors, we have to think through what the health implication is, what the environmental implication is, what the economic implication is. And that's what I'm going to try and present a case study of um, using palm oil. What does this set of trade-offs look off for the palm oil case? Um, now, on the top right-hand corner, we, can, we see the very familiar uh, picture where the environmental picture where potentially uh, oil palm production on a large plantation scale can cause deforestation. This is a well-known story. On the top left-hand corner is the health story. This is controversial and highly debated, but nevertheless, the idea is that when we substitute uh, saturated fats um, with polyunsaturated fats, that has an implication for cardiovascular health. Um, and palm oil has a high proportion of saturated fat and a relatively low proportion of uh, polyunsaturated fat. Uh, so substitutions can potentially provide health benefits. But look below, look at the fantastic economic story that, uh, that palm oil provides. And that is the source of its success in this region. Uh, that's the average oil yields uh, in terms of uh, tons of oil per, uh, per hectare per year Palm, uh, oil palm compared with competitors. That's 10 times the yield that you get out of oil palm compared to uh, some of the competitors. That, combined with some of the versatile food processing properties of palm oil, makes it the runaway success that it is. So how do we um, take all these aspects into account in making decisions in the sector? We're looking at Thailand. Why? Well, several reasons. Uh, it's, it's a large producing as well as consuming uh, uh, country in terms of palm oil. Not many people know much about it. But it is the third largest producer of, uh, of palm oil, a long way below uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, but nevertheless fairly significant. Um, it has a large food sector. It's one of the most successful food producers in the world, which it exports to the rest of the world. Uh, it very actively intervenes in, policy, uh, uh, in the policy arena in the terms of palm oil, both in production as well as consumption. Uh, it's got a non-communicable disease problem, cardiovascular disease problem, uh, like many countries in this region. Uh, so these are all uh, Im uh, important aspects. But the environmental aspect is interesting, particularly in Thailand, and it's a bit different from uh, the other stories in, in other countries. Uh, because in, in, in Thailand, predominantly oil palm grows as an agricultural land use, which is competing with other agricultural crops, rather than competing with forests, at least on, uh, at the current scale, for the most part. Uh, so that presents a little different environmental picture compared to some of the others. So in our project, we are basically asking the question, if you intervene in the sector, if you put in a policy measure in place, what happens to the economy versus environment versus uh, nutrition and health? Uh, and can we find solutions that optimize across uh, the set of criteria? Um, and so what we do is we take all the best available information on all these aspects and we build simulation models, which actually let you ask these questions. We've got an economic model of the whole economy of Thailand within which the food sector is located and oil palm and palm oil are located. Uh, we connect that to an uh, epidemiological model of health outcomes arising from consumption changes. And we also connect it with a land use model which predicts uh, greenhouse gas emissions when you change your, uh, uh, your uh, land use uh, with regard to edible oil. So, uh, so we've got this model and we can simulate various outcomes arising from various policies. Now, I'm not going to run through the whole thing. I'm just going to give you a very broad picture of the sorts of things we're doing with these models. Uh, one very popular policy measure in the world currently is around, around global food systems is what we call fat taxes or taxes related to health based uh, on, on individual foods. 
So many, many countries are uh, experimenting with sugar taxes now. They're experimenting with soda taxes, for example. Now, what in Thailand, if we had a palm oil tax, a substantial palm oil tax, what difference would that make? And what would the outcomes look like? When we put this through our simulation models, um, the results we get are broadly as follows. Um, we find that in the next 20 years or so, this tax would actually result in a fairly substantial reduction in net economic welfare when um, uh, the tax would actually disincentivize oil palm production and so producers will lose out and consum consumers will have uh, uh, more expensive food in many cases. And that is a net economic welfare that goes down. The health outcomes on the other hand go up as cardiovascular health improves uh, with the substitution in oils. Environmental outcomes, perhaps a surprising bit, goes down. And this goes back to what I mentioned, that in Thailand, oil palm competes with agricultural land uses. So if you tax it and you disincentivize oil palm production, you're substituting it with other crops, which might actually sequester less carbon than uh, oil palm might. And so, uh, so you see uh, the results are pulling in different directions. And you also have to ask yourself, is there political will to implement such a tax? And these are some of the challenges faced uh, when implementing a tax. So what sorts of outcomes can we see in Thailand? What would be the elements of a solution strategy given all these constraints? Well, one thing we think could be important is a strategic shift in the long term from food use of palm oil to biofuel use of palm oil, which is already underway in Thailand, bio, substantial biofuel use of palm oil. Um, can the government incentivize this and make this even more attractive than it is currently so that you retain the economic vitality of the se sector, which is important, um, while you avoid some of the health repercussions arising from it. Uh, in parallel, can we uh, put in place policy options to support the uh, use of other edible oils in food use? Um, and again, there is a lot of momentum around things like rice bran oil, indigenous oils, in which food technologists have come up with fantastic new applications to actually uh, enable the use of other oils in, in, in food use. And can we tap into that? Can there be policy support for that? And finally, harnessing the incredible expertise that Thailand has in food technology. It's invested for a long time in food technology, technology solutions. Can that be stepped up even further? So these are some of the elements that we think should underpin a palm oil strategy for Thailand in the future. Some broad final thoughts uh, as I conclude. We need to avoid the temptation to oversimplify the palm oil story. It's not a linear story. Every country has its own um, set, setting with regard to palm oil, and every policy strategy should be different. Research has my sector, I'm a researcher, and I think there's a lot of research yet to be done in this area. One is to establish the health implications more definitively, um, quantifying trade-offs like we're trying to do here. And applied food technology research, i.e. Uh, actually working with industry to develop new technologies, and we've only sort of scratched the frontier here and policy science as well. In all these cases, we'll have to work crucially with industry because I think without that, the solution is going to be incomplete and partial. Thank you. Thank you for listening.